title of the message today is, we really thought we were ready. I can't imagine how many couples have that realization after they say, I do. Hi, thank you so much for tuning in to P2P Relates, where we talk about all things relationships. I'm Pat Renfro, and we are at chapter 13, the final chapter of the book, Marriage is Not for Punks. 12 things to think about before you say I do, but this is 13, so especially written for married couples, because there's so many things to work out. I often say things like this, it's like twins. Twins have the most in common they ever will, and yet, they are two individuals that actually may have a lot in common, but they're still different. And different's not bad. It's just some adjustments. So when you get married, you may love each other deeply. And I'm telling you, Tina Turner says, what's love got to do with it? That's a good question to ask because it's not enough. You know, I can really adore you. I can care about you. I can actually have a pitter pat in my heart for you. But the reality is we got to work through some stuff, which is why I wrote the book. And so when you do actually get married and you really don't think you need to look at those other chapters, you're going to run into some things. And so we're going to cover those today very briefly as much as I can. I'll just slide through it because you will have the book eventually this year to read and see for yourself. And I think that even though you're married and by the time my book comes out later on this year, you would have worked through some things, you just begun. You just begun. So let's hit it. There's gonna be five areas that I'm gonna try my best to cover. And in some cases, I won't go very deep at all because you need to read the book. Okay, number one, acknowledge your decision. In life, whether it's marriage, a friendship, going to college, moving to another city, buying a ring, getting in debt, going on a trip, we make decisions all the time. In fact, we probably make, I think I've heard like somewhere between 300 decisions a day, little bitty decisions to major decisions. But once you make a decision, you have to count the cost if you want to reverse that decision. And so now that you've said I do and you've made this commitment for forever, acknowledge that. You know what? I got to put my big girl panties on. I got to pull my britches up, guys. And I got to be a man or a woman about this thing because I decided that that's what I was going to do. So there's some commitments that need to be made. Moving right into number two. And I would summarize it in three words, pursuit, intention, and agreement. You have to pursue your spouse. Even when they disappoint you or they annoy you, you've got to pursue what you decided you were going to do. Intention, be on purpose about how you love them, how you treat them, how you serve them. Marriage is a give-give. It's not a give and take. It's not a 50-50 proposition. It's uh let me die to self and just be totally present with this person and make them number one priority. Now, I'm not talking about relationships that involve mental or physical abuse. So if that's something you've already discovered or you see a a trait and somebody already tried to warn you and you weren't paying attention, there's a totally different conversation we're going to have. I'm talking about two people who really fell in love and really care about each other, but now they've got to figure out how to live together. <laughs> that requires a skill set. Ask any newlywed, ask any married people that have been together for several years or decades. It just takes agreement, intentionality, and pursuit. And it also takes acceptance of the decision. It's cumulative. So the third one is grace. Grace. Oh my goodness. I remember when I got married, and I tell this story a lot because it's so powerful. This lady said to me, she had been married 20 plus years, and she said, your husband will disappoint you many times. Your husband will hurt you. That's a given. Why? Because we're human and we're 
imperfect. And so when you're in a relationship with someone and they let you down, they don't meet your needs, they disappoint you, most of the time it doesn't have anything to do with you. It has so much to do with how they came up as a child, what their family life is like, all those things we've covered in the previous chapters that you might want to go back and read now because it might help you. You still might wish that you had uh, paid attention earlier and maybe made a different decision, but you're in this decision now. And so Grace Grace says, you're going to make mistakes. They're going to make mistakes. We're not going to meet each other's every need. And so it's going to be important to roll over. It's going to be important to get past it. It's going to be important to let's move right along. It's going to be important to forgive, forgive, forgive. Because again, you're imperfect and you're going to do that same hurt and disappointment to them. And it's not going to be intentional. It's just going to be because you are absolutely you. And so you're doing you, not recognizing that when you do you, you actually knock them with your elbow into an area that they didn't ask for. So grace, grace is really important. That's the third one. What you need to understand about marriage. Marriage, like I said earlier, is a give, give situation. It's not a give and take. Marriage really is an opportunity for you to grow, for you to grow up, for you to grow out, for you to die to self, for you to discover what your potential is. Because you've got that person that's ending up being the closest to you. They see your imperfections. They see your most true self. Uh, they're with you more than you're going to be with anyone else now if you allow the marriage to control how you respond, then you can get resentful, bitter, distant, and then other people can begin to be something you spend more time with or you're more intimate with. But really, you made that decision, going back to number one, and you want to be true to your decision. You want to have that good intent. And so you need to be mature. And we're not necessarily so mature, especially if we get married under 30. But even after 30, we just have these premonitions about how things are going to go that are quite inaccurate more often than not. Because the true self is not really something that you understand or see, even when you're looking, until you live together. Then there's a difference. So in this fourth phase, you need to understand that you've got to grow and you've got to change and you've got to forgive and you've got to turn the other cheek and you've got to just make that major commitment and understand that as you evolve and hopefully as your partner changes and evolves and grows, they're going to, you all going to be the same person you married. You're just going to get older together. Uh, but you can grow and you can and ch change. But one of the things that I said to you in previous talks is what if they never change? That's how you have to look at it. That's why you talk about these things before you say I do. But now that you've said I do, you want to make sure that you just focus on how you can love them and uh, have grace for them and be intentional for them. But look at how you can mature and grow. My husband used to say, marriage is not for love. Marriage is for growth. And I used to think he was crazy, but he's passed away. And a lot of the things he used to say to me are coming to pass to be understood as that brother was right about a lot of stuff. And marriage is that kind of thing. It's the thing that's going to make you or break you. And if you're mature, if you grow, if you pursue growth, you're going to flourish out of it as a result. Again, excluding any type of uh, physical or mental abuse I'm talking about in a normal, healthy situation. Growth, personal development is almost one of the best things outside of commitment and owning your decision and getting mature you can ever do in a marriage. And then the final thing is recognizing gender differences because we know Men are very different from women. And I'll make it really super simple. Women need love and affection. And they need provision. And I don't mean that like if you don't provide for them, they're going to perish. Because we're in the 21st century and women are pretty independent. And they're out there kicking butt in careers and society and handling their business and they're the moms in most cases, and so they've had to be 
backbone for the family and that type of thing. But from an emotional standpoint, they need that security that says, my man's got me. He's got me emotionally. He's got me financially. And that doesn't mean that you ignore your part and help out, but it does mean that that's just what she needs. She needs your love and your attention, your attentiveness. She needs to know that you care about what she cares about enough that even if you don't think like that, you'll make that effort because she's worth it. And women, men need two simple things because men compared to us are very simple. They need good sex and they need respect. And I think technically, as they grow and they mature, the respect is much more important than the sex, but both of them are way up there. And so if you understand that about your man, there may be things that you'll have to make adjustments. And again, you all stay on one accord, you pursue agreement, you uh, are intentional, you own your decision, uh, grace, grace, all these things put together will help you get through. And don't live in a vacuum. Find couples that you don't mind being in community with, that you all can check in, that you can help each other go along the journey because uh, other people are going to be married longer than you and they're going to have insight and input. And you want to be able to glean from that wisdom and grow. So it's going to be really important to be in community and don't just be in a shell where you pull, it, pull out away from everyone. Because if something's not quite right and you don't know it, you won't know it if you don't have community. So anyway, I wish you the best. Congratulations for the new newlyweds and for those who are wise enough that they've been married for a while, but things are a little rough and they tuned in. I just want to congratulate you. Um, and if you got questions, please let me know. And if you married people chose to watch this, let the younger uh, married couples, not necessarily in age, but in the number of time they've been married, glean from your wisdom. Give them some some uh, gifts of points that they need to follow to be successful and to arrive where you are and maybe even surpass. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.